Hey, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. I decided not to go in person today because I'm tired. I am tired. I ended up uh, cleaning a carburetor for a snowblower uh, yesterday, threw it in the ultrasonic cleaner and now the snowblower works, but it's still pulsating up and down. It's going to which means there's a problem probably with the, the spray nozzle in the carburetor. So I have bought a new carburetor on Amazon for 30 bucks. And then I'll put that carburetor in and see if that's solving the problem. So here's, here's another Wally watch. So I measured the amplitude of this watch and the swing on it was around, I wanted to say 40 degrees, which was pretty pathetic. So Wally asked me if I could have a look at this watch too. And even though I don't like small size six watches, I said, reluctantly said yes. So we're going to strip this puppy dog down and we're going to see if we can repair it. Um, with these watches here, you've got to line the hands up this way, like that, so that you can pull the hands off all at once. And this thing is ticking right now, but I ran this all night, so it should only tick for a few seconds. So it's a, but these have got, this has got a, a crystal, but the crystal is a plastic crystal. So it's not a, uh, it's not a uh, <coughs> mineral crystal and absolutely not a sapphire. So it's a domed plastic acrylic, I think, crystal. So the first thing I'm going to do here with this watch is take the hands off so I can protect it from inadvertently doing something wrong. So to do that, you just have to find wedge your, your opener in there and then just rock it back and forth a bit till it gets in there and then very carefully lift that up. Um, I'm going to put my gloves on later after I clean this baby. So I'll make one video disassembling it and the other video cleaning it. So there, the hands are the hands. The hands are out and because the hands are so small in this watch I don't want to get my big huge hand remover because uh, that would be an overkill so I'll just slide this under here like that just to protect the hands as I pop them up this is cracked all the crap but I think he knew that well he knew that so not sure whose watch this was but it is cracked all to crap crap cracked cracked so there's no way of me solving that problem now i'm going to put the hands inside the uh the crystal here like that and that way i don't lose them and this one here this hand here is going to be super hard to, to uh, take off but first i want to make sure the movement's not moving and i've already yeah, it's just barely rocking back and forth. I'm just going to touch it with my screwdriver. Come on, stop. There. Just stopped it. So I, I reached in there with my screwdriver. I just touched it. Just like barely touched it, right? So, and in this case here, I can still put the uh, piece of paper in here, but I guess because it's so small. I'm just going to be able to do that probably with the piece of paper and then see if I can get these hand removers to get in there. Yeah, it's so small. Wedge that up on one side here. All right, this is not going to work with hand removers. I'm just going to have to go in like so, but there shouldn't be any problem there. Wow, this thing is on there. Good. Time to get in dirty here. Deep and dirty. I just want to make sure I don't bend. There we go. So here in this case, because the uh, it's so small, all I did was go 
use one side of the hand remover and then the other side of the hand remover to get it underneath. That way I wasn't putting pressure on the actual hand itself. Um, and because I didn't want to have to replace the hand and I made sure the pivot down there is safe. It's a safe pivot. That's what pivots do. So that's that. Put the hand removers back. I'll have to show you my carriage sometime. I'll maybe at the end of the video I'll show you the carriage with the parts that I mostly use. I've got another set of these here, which are supposedly for removing um, the hairspring stud from the balance, which is um, sometimes what you have to do. Try to avoid doing that, but do I have any cuts in my hands? I trimmed my fingernails today because I was working on that. Uh, working on, see this right here. There's a spring right there that springs the lid open. Okay, so I don't need to play with that, but I'll likely oil that later on. And now I just want to remove the lid. So when you close this, you press down on this lid hinge here, and then you close the lid there. I have a, a tool, I have a crazy tool that uh, that allows me to, this thing only opens that far, which is kind of poopy, but uh, I have a crazy tool that allows me to reshape that lid. Um, as you can see, there's a date on there. What's that date? It says M plus 2481RC. So that was the servicing that was done many moons ago. And I've got some more servicing marks on there, as you can see right there, there's a servicing mark. And down below, I think there's a servicing mark. So it's been serviced a few times. I can see one, two, two other servicing marks on it. I actually don't bother putting a servicing mark on it after I've serviced it, but maybe I should. Because these are catalog numbers, these aren't dates. So when they serviced watches, back in the day, they would put a catalog number on it. So this is not a high jewel watch. It's a very low jewel watch movement. And actually, just for Wally's sake, I don't like working on these movements because they're such a low value. And and uh, it takes such a long time to do anything on them. This screw looks like it's half a screw. And so that's why, because they're not, they've got to be of sentimental value to somebody. And I think this is of sentimental value to Wally. So it's the only reason I'm working on it. And the other watch I was working on um, yesterday um, I've got going really well it's running right now I ran it all night I wound it up the spring I thought the spring was slipping on it which I know it was so that's this watch here so I took this apart and let's have a little look at this for a second and I don't know it's probably doesn't have much amplitude left in it because I wound it last night or yesterday actually around three o'clock and it's still running, which is nice. And there's almost no amplitude left on it. Because it's almost stopping. But this thing actually has really good amplitude after it's wound. So, and it worked all night. So there's a lot of hope involved that that's all I need to do. And yesterday what I did was I took this part of the bridge off the watch, lifted everything up. I had to unscrew the ratchet wheel here. And then I went in there and took out the mainspring barrel and then I actually took the cap off the barrel, looked inside. It seemed like the, the, the mainspring was hooked. And so I redid it, I rehooked it. I punched down a bit on the little, the barrel. The edge of the mainspring has a, a small hook on it. And I'll just draw this for a second. I got all these old business cards from my last job and they're really good for lecturing. And if you guys don't want me to lecture, Please write it down in a note and say, look, Jay Dizzle, um, we're sick of listening to you talk, so find another job. Find another way of spending your time. But for you people that do like to listen to me talk about crap, um, I got all these business cards and I use the back of them so you don't know where I used to work. T to draw things. So what was I thinking of here? Oh yeah, the barrel. So the barrel... If you look down on the barrel, down on the barrel, down on the street. If you look down on the barrel, there's a little tiny hook on the side like that. 
And so the spring actually has an opening and it hooks onto that barrel. And when it goes around, this is a shitty drawing. So this is a shitty drawing. It goes around like that. When it gets to the end here, it does this, right? And right there, right there, there's an opening. And then the arbor is in the middle. And in this case, the barrel, the arbor was on the other side of the barrel. So if you look at this barrel, so I'm going to draw an engineering drawing here. Sideways like that, you'd see the little piece of metal, the opening here. And they just punch the piece of metal and push it inward. And that creates the hook on the inside. So the spring I found was the right spring and it had an opening to slide to, for, for it to hook onto this here. And actually, <laughs> I've actually drawn it backwards because if you're winding it like this, it'll just slide. So just pretend the hook is the other way. The hook is this way and it goes into the hole and hooks, right? And on the other side of the arbor, the hook on this side would be this way, like that. And it would go around like this. The arbor would hook onto that hole, but the arbor is on the gear side. So I had to take this off again and the arbor was on the gear side and was bigger than this but sloped so you could push down on it and this would open up. It's a little tricky to do but you got to push down on it, it opens up and then you and then it sort of snaps in place. It's a different kind of barrel on that on that old Waltham that I just showed you. So so hopefully this barrel is not a different kind of barrel. All right? All right. All right, so I've dropped the uh, movement down. I'm going to open this up again and I think I could just take the movement out. It should, I should just be able to, uh, I'll use my fingies here, but it should just be able to come out like this. Just move it around a bit and then eventually it just comes out. So there's the case. Um, I'll clean this case up nicely after and I need to take the um, take the face off even though it's cracked all the crap. I'll be a good boy and take the face off. I've got a bad hip, man. It's hurting today. It's a bad hip day. I think because there's a lot of winter weather out there, and that weather, winter weather is causing hip pain. And I think my hip pain's from many years of golfing. And I get a get a new hip. The tragically hip. So I'm a hipster. So once I get that new hip, I'll be back golfing again. So I loosen those screws that keep the dial on and then just want to wedge a screwdriver in there and then use the fat of your finger to keep the, um, the dial away as you rotate it and try to get all the dial feet out. And there we go. All the dial feet are out, dial feet. There's the dial feet. So I'm going to move that over to the watch movement and very carefully take out, it's still ticking, a bugger. Take out the uh, hour wheel, put that aside. And this is weird. Look at this. Oh no, that's not the minute wheel. That's the minute wheels over here. Looks like it's stuck on there. So I just grab the minute wheel by the pinion just a bit and be very careful with it, right? And then I want to pull out the um, a cannon pin, you know. Can I lift that straight up? Yeah, I can. Look at that. Cannon pinion is out. And then I keep your eyeballs peeled because that fourth wheel is sticking up. It should be, it should be, where is the fourth wheel? Where are you, fourth wheel? Well, this is a, a hunter configuration, so the fourth wheel will be off to the side. There is a fourth wheel pivot right there. So that is so easy to break off. You just have to watch yourself. So now I want to um, relieve tension on the uh, on the mainspring. I'd really like to take this off with, without it ticking. And to do that, I believe, I believe, I can't you be true, that I just have to press this button in, but after I've got my uh, bench key in here. So I just put the bench key in there. It's too small. It's too small. And then <clears throat> my CPU is giving me a warning. Ever since I changed the uh, processor, percent processor usage, it's acting up. All right, there's the bench key. Put that in there. And I know I could wind it with this bench key. 
So what I'm going to do is press down and put it in the wind position. Wind position, and then use another screwdriver to press down on this little piece of metal right here. I believe that releases it. Let me look. I got to get in dirty. Got to get in close and doity. I'm turning on my light now. I apologize for that, but but I need to get in dirty, deep and dirty. Because this is effectively the click spring for it. Look at that again. Yeah, it doesn't want to go down. When in doubt, give up. I'm going to give up and I got to make sure I don't put this down with the. Uh, just going to put it down like this for now, for a second. And I'll stop this and then just take it up straight up. Um, and I know the center wheel. Let me just look and make sure I don't F up that pivot. You know, look at where that pivot is on there. Where is that pivot? Where are you, pivot? Oh, there you are there. So I'm going to put that pivot, even though I think it won't touch anything, I'm going to put it on the edge like that. There we go. And let me just tighten that down a bit, like so. And then I'm going to, it may go zzz when I'm done, but so be it. I'm just going to take my thumb and just put a little tiny bit of thumb pressure on the end there. And when I unscrew this, I like to put a toothpick on there. And that's just to keep the bridge down, or the balance cock as they call it. And I've explained why before, because it has one screw. If it was a two screwed balance cock, then that's not good. All right, stop this nonsense. There we go. It's oot! And because I'm a good boy here, I'm going to use this here and screw that all the way up almost to see if it will rest. Uh, it needs to go over a bit more. Maybe like that. Maybe it's cold outside. I'm going to rest on there. There we go. So now that's on there and it's in a relaxed position. So I end up putting a lid on this. So I'm going to move this off to the side out of my way and drop a lid on it. I'll clean that later on. Probably use the dunker tank. You heard it. The dunker tank. And I wish I could get the energy off of this. Uh, the energy off of this before I take it apart, but I guess I can't, so I'm going to have to take it apart with the energy on. Alright, every watch is a mystery, right? I think I've got a hole right here that I can use to take the energy out of the mainspring, so I think I was wrong the first time. Again, looking where that pivot is. I don't think the pivot's going to get in the way because it's on the in drops down on this side and there's tons of room, so but I want to put the key in there before I press this hole. So let me see if I can do it this way. Get that bench key, wherever it is. It's up here. There's a hairy arm here. And I think it's the thinner end of the bench key. And now that I got the balance out, I'm not as chicken. And I've got a needle here stuck inside of one of my... Uh, Push that down, like that, and that's in the winding winding mode. So if I press this button, and there we go. I can feel it 
feel the energy of it unwinding. So let me move my camera over a bit here. So there's a button. There's a hole right here, like there. And then you put your bench key in, into the winding mechanism like that. Press down on it like that so it's in the winding mode. And then very carefully push down this lever. And when you push this lever down, it lets you actually take the energy out of the mainspring. So that's what it's doing right now. There, did you see that slip? So that's taking the energy out of the mainspring is what you want to do. You don't want to leave it in because if you leave it in, you're going to pull that out. So I thought it was that other thing, but it wasn't. I forgot. I forgot. Now, I want to put that watch down with that pivot up. So just squeeze it in here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to buy Wally a new watch movement. And I don't want to do that. I've bought sacrifice movements for this exact watch before. And sure enough, uh, they'll cost you like 50 bucks, maybe maybe even 100 bucks. Um, it's no fun to buy a sacrifice movement and then realize you only need one part from it. And then you can't get the movement up again, up and running again. I did that for a watch I was repairing where the gentleman, he actually gave me a case of wine, which was so nice of him, but I actually bought a hundred dollar sacrifice movement for his watch and then I gave his watch back to him and I said whatever you want to pay me um, I'm good with and he was like what do you mean by that and I was like whatever you want to pay me I am good with so I'm going to lift this straight up and make sure the wheels are free there we go and I'm going to make sure the screws are grouped with that so I'll take a picture of this because I want to also make sure I remember where the uh, winding mechanism is. So let me take a photo of this baby. And, he, and specifically the winding mechanisms on it. Because they can be a pain in the butt. And then I'm going to remove. i got to take, before I can strip everything off, I've got to take the other wheel out too. So... There you go. Very carefully remove this plate. Now, I told people before that they said, hey, how come you're not wearing gloves? I watched another video on watchmaking from the 1920s and 30s, and nobody had finger cuts on, so stop picking on me. And maybe one of the beautiful things is the watchmaker left his fingerprint for all to see. <laughs> so, but when I reassemble this, I will put a glove on. I'll be a good boy and glove up. That way no one yells at me for not putting a glove on. Lift that straight up and put that out of the way. I'll show you what looks everything looks like. I've taken out the cannon pinion so I can lift the wheels straight up now. That's the center wheel. So it's one, two. This is the third wheel. I call it the intermediate wheel. And I always put these pinion down, so the, I put them down like this, that way that's the sensitive part of it doesn't accidentally uh, get screwed. So this is the wheel with the second hand pivot. There it is there, and I'll put that again down with that pivot down. Then I lift up the escapement here. The escapement, turn on the light here, I guess. I have a light on my camera, which is kind of cool. So I'm not sure how much better that makes things work. But So there's the escapement with a little tiny doggy feet. The mainspring barrel will lift right up. And under here, I've got a barrel ratchet. This is for winding right here. And I've got a click spring right here. And I won't take this off because i mucho concerned about what happens if this thing actually gets damaged and I have to go get another click spring? Guess what? I gotta pay another hundred bucks to get a sacrifice movement. That's why a lot of go watchmakers will not work on these watches because they cause all kinds of trauma. Trauma. And let me just lift this out of the way. I think this can come straight up. Can it not? Or can it? I'm gonna have to look at it again. Just move the camera over a bit so I can get down and dirty again. I got my airy loop on right now. 
Looks like there's been some work here. Yeah, I know this thing has to actually come out. So it lifts back. So I might want to just rotate this movement before I lift that back. Like that. Yeah, again, if you uh, are unsure of whether um, you, you, I could take the springs off and everything on this thing, but again, there's this danger, danger will of this watch not working. See, I got this thing here. It goes back and forth, so I think if I take this back, will I, will I be able to lift it out? No, I may have to actually remove some things here. See, there's another spring under here that I didn't want to remove. Damn it. Darn it. And I'm going to get another close-up picture of this because I know that if I remove that, putting it back together will be a mucho pain. All right, I think there's no other way but to unscrew the top of this thing to get this out. Hopefully there's no problem here. Baby, it's cold outside. I'm taking apart a watch. Baby, it's cold outside. If you watch me, I'll scream. I gotta take a picture of this because it looks pretty complex. Maybe it's cold outside. Can you see how that works? That is not an easy one, man. It is not an easy one. Can I get closer here? At an angle? There we go. That looks complex as hell. So, so I got to make sure this spring here doesn't jump on me. So, and I see the way it's put in. So I got to just take my my thing here and then just grab the spring out like that and put all this aside. I just saw the world's smallest screw and why is this screw here? Well that's for the plate. So I make sure the screw and the plate are grouped up. That's that little plate I just undid. Undone. And I'll take this and then couple it with that little tiny pawl. And then this can go over here as well. And then can I take this out now? That is the question is. Well, I can if I remove this. Baby, it's cold outside. This is like a plunger movement here. This goes back and forth like that. And then the plunger is like that. Something's still keeping it in. Never force the parts. Never force the parts. Never force the parts. And you never want to bend the parts. i got to get something for my leg. It's hurting like hell. Well, I know what I'm going to do. I need to flip it over and unscrew this plate here. I'm going to take another picture of it because it's got to be done that way. I think the hardest part about cleaning watches is putting these setting mechanisms back together again. I've done it like a lot of times, but it's such a pain in the butt. Such a pain in the butt. That's probably why Wally said, hey, can you clean my watch? like what's your name who are you looks like there's lubrication here too these two setting mechanisms again more pictures more photos and I can use this particular video maybe to help me put it back together again later Maybe it's cold outside. This is an odd arrangement here because this thing, I don't believe it spins, but 
when I take this off, I will see whether there's spinning action going on here. So I lift that up. No, it doesn't spin. That's strange, man. That is strange. It just screws down like that. Yeah, and then the dirty side's up. Is it? I always check and make sure there's no angle on these on these um, teeth that it's not angled down or up or something because then when you put it back together again it'll want that angle I'm looking at it and I can see that there's there's no angle but I can see there's a little bit of a angle inside where the screws go so now I gotta make sure that the screws go in the right way when it's time and this thing has to come off too some genius back in 1900 came up with this whole setting mechanism said hey why don't I make it super hard for whoever's cleaning the watch to actually take this apart again I'm grouping the screws I'll show you what kind of a mess I have later See now that this is off right again I, mean, I can see that there's a little angle inside where the screw goes down so that's off so if I flip that on the other side now just flip that over like that you'll see that this piece here will come off right which means this piece should be able to lift up but I might have to punch it out or something there we go so you see that now I'm going to take a picture of that because that's how it comes out So there was no other way of removing this. I'm just going to put it on the mat just like that. I'll clean those parts. I'm not going to remove this screw and I don't think I'll remove this as well. Leave that there and now I've got to take off the pallet fork. And with this one here, I do take it off, take off hoser. Uh, let me see if I can get a good angle here without hitting my head on it. So I take the pallet fork out. When I take the other part out, I keep some pressure on the, and this is a bridge because it has two screws. But I keep some pressure on the bridge so that it won't pop up and perhaps bend the pallet fork, which is which would ruin my day. Then I have to get under here and just kind of wedge this up. That's going to come up pretty easy, I think. I'm going to just lift this straight up. There we go. Turn that around and dump the pallet fork. <laughs> so there we go. And then there's one more wheel to go, I believe. This wheel right here, Jerry. Right here. And again, this little wheel here is part of the whole winding mechanism, right? Winding mechanism. And of course, my camera is right where my fingers are. And this is also not counterclockwise, which is nice. It's just a normal clockwise movement. Put that down, take this out. And I know if I look at it, yeah, there's a little bevel on the inside where the screw goes. So that makes it a lot easier to actually repair there's the plate I'm not taking this out and I'm not taking I don't want to deal with the spring there and I'm not bothering to take this out right here I could probably take this out what do you think yeah might as well I don't want to fart with the spring though so when that goes back in it's got to be I gotta not fart with the spring but I'll clean this and I think I gotta pluck it out with Rodico too, because it looks pretty stiff. Get a piece of Rodico, stretch it. I just grab that screw. There we go. Put that down on the mat, and then grab this jobby doohickey and put that down on the mat. So there we go, done. Now I'm gonna zoom out. There you go. That's a lot of parts, baby. That's a lot of parts. So I'm not sure if I stopped or started recording or when I did it, but I, it's a lot of parts.
So I did, the winding mechanism for this is complex, I would say. Um, and now I gotta basically take these parts and fill up the baskets. And these are the baskets I use to clean the watch. So, and because I'm such a great guy, I'm gonna show you my basket filling technique. Maybe it's cold outside. So I'm gonna just remove the baskets. One, two, and three, right? And now the main the main plates will go inside that basket, right? So if I've got all these plates here, can go inside the basket. Now I can probably pop the mainspring and then put that in there too and clean that mainspring. I always worried about losing the mainspring because that was a pretty nice little mainspring, but I'm not sure whether I want to. Well, look at this. It's got one of these winding thingamajobbies on the bottom of it, which means I got to take a photo of that because I do not want to lose the winding thingamajiggy on the bottom of the mainspring. And it already looks like it's ready to be lost. That just comes off like that. Yeah, that's nasty. So that, I can put that in here. And then the mainspring is, again, one of those mainsprings that's got a top and bottom to it, which is a pain in the butt. So I've got to wind it the opposite way to take it out. out. Like that. And there's the catch on the mainspring. And there's the mainspring arbor right there. And the catch on that arbor. Right? And again, I'm going to take a, uh, a picture of the mainspring um, to make sure I know which way it goes. So, so I can throw this in the basket. Um, this arbor will not move, but part of it will poke, poke out. That little part there, the arbor, will come out. Now I'm not too concerned with losing that inside of here. So I can throw that in the way it is. And then the mainspring I can just unweave from the barrel. But if I look at the side, how is that thing snapped in? It looks like there's a little punch right there for the mainspring. I'm going to look at that really closely. Yeah, there's a little punch in there that that mainspring rides on. So if I throw that, I want to take a picture of the mainspring so I know which way it whirls around the, ba the uh, barrel. And there we go. And then this goes inside like that. So that's fine. So now I can take this out. This I think this comes right out like that. There we go. Like that there. And then the mainspring, I just grab with my tweezers carefully. I don't want to have to replace this mainspring, but if I do, I do. We'll see how set this baby is. And then just roll that with my fingers. Gotta make sure my camera isn't. I'm in camera, as they say, right? So I roll that out with my fingers carefully. And it'll just sort of snap out one walk. Walk it out, as they say. There we go. I'm walking it out. If I'm able to find a mainspring of this size to replace this one with, I will. But see the hook on the end? That's the hook on the end of the mainspring right there. I just you get my hand in there. Uh, there. There's the hole on the mainspring. And then the same holes on the other side. I can actually put this into the bottom of the cleaning basket. I can put this into the cleaning basket on the bottom. And just so I don't lose all the parts, I'll put this into the cleaning basket too, like that. And then the barrel can go in the cleaning basket as well, like this. There we go. There's plenty of room in this basket, man. Plenty of room in this basket. So that's in there now. Um, and the mainspring is pretty much set, but I'm going to clean it anyway and stretch it out. But I might try to find a new mainspring for this watch because it's... Uh, it's pretty set. So I drop that. I don't want to put any more things in this basket here. You got to make sure you don't put parts in the basket that are so big that they're going to fall out. All right, now we're going to the little baskets. The little baskets. And I want to get a bigger screwdriver to open these up, but I want to couple my, uh, my parts in the little baskets here. So if I can at all. 
Um, geez, man. So uh, I'm going to take the pallet fork. I'm going to clean that separately. So I'm moving that out of the way. Uh, there are some things in here that I could put in here, but I'm worried. I am worried. There's so many parts that are part of parts. So, what will I do here? What will I do? I could put some of the stuff won't fit through the, gr the grate. Like these little screws here will be fine on their own. So maybe I can put those in the quadrant. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to put it's two really super small screws in with it like that and like that. So that's not going to fall through the mesh here. So we're good. And then I want to find something else that's obviously of different size. So this here has got a smaller screw or a bigger screw on it. So I can do that and use the bigger screw because now I know I've got two screws there for that and one screw for this. So that's a bigger screw. And I can probably also throw these paws in here because they are, throw that in there too, the spring. And the reason is, is that they are unique and they don't have any screws associated with them. So that is probably good enough for that basket, I think. Uh, let me close that down and throw that in. So that's basket number one. Make sure that's nice and tight. And I'll take the basket on the other side to the opposite side, which is basket number two. And you want to balance it out that way when your cleaning machine is spinning, you don't have issues, right? So, so basket number two, I think I can throw in, this is for the, for this here, right? So that looks awful small totally small so I can throw this in here like that and throw the world's smallest screw in there and it shouldn't go anywhere and then I can throw in the balance bridge or the uh, the uh, bridge for the uh, pallet fork and it's two screws because they won't get mixed up so that's good there and then I think that I don't have much more oh I can throw in the the cannon pinion and throw in the hour wheel and throw in the minute wheel. Throw in the minute wheel. So all those things are very unique, so they're not going to cause me a problem. So that is good enough for that one. So now I know which screws go with what, right? That's the trick behind this. That's two. And then a third one here. Lucky I got lots of little baskets, eh? Lucky, lucky, lucky. Now for this, I can throw these, this in here. Now these screws are different, I think. These two screws. If I look at these screws, they are totally different. Even the screw heads are different. Because this goes with this. And this goes with this. So I'll throw this in here like that. Like that. And I do have a fourth basket. But I think I can toss all of my parts for my winding mechanism can go in here, right? Throw all that stuff in there. There we go. Now that's all in there and I don't have to worry about that other screw getting mixed up. And I got one more basket to fill. And that's this one here. And I think I can mix up some stuff into this one. I'm going to put this little mechanism here with this that screw, so I know they're together, right? This just saves you a boatload of time if you're uh, if you're in a hurry. And I'm gonna throw this wheel in there like that. The thing with these wheels going in here is that I worry about the pivots on these, the pivot on the pinions on these wheels. But let me put this one sort of on the side like that. And then this one is too big. I don't want to put that in there because that'll smash against the other parts. It's too big. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Like this. And then that's good enough for that. Let me put that in here. Baby, it's cold outside. 
Stop complaining, you dummy. Baby, it's cold outside. I'm not your mummy. Baby, it's cold outside. See, I should be singing these Christmas songs. Now this final basket here is where I can put in the center center wheel in there like that. Like turn that around so it's facing downward. You grab that center wheel and grab the pivot on the end here and then put it in like this. That's why I don't like working on these point friggin' what am I call so this one here I want to put in very carefully. But the pivot on the end is just sitting on there. So, And these screws here are for the plates. So I'll just throw these screws in. Like so, like so, like so. And then these two were together. They were from the same family. Like this and like this. And then these screws here, same family. Like this. And like this. There she is. There she is, bye. I'll basket it up. And I look at this here and the seam on it. And I like this part seam to be tighter than this seam here. So I like to put it down like that. Like this. And then make sure all the baskets are in there nice and tight, which they are. Look at the side to make sure the baskets are in there tight. And now it's ready for cleaning. So that's my first video. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, let's uh, process this video and move on to the next video. I don't need to put this into the cleaning machine. I will likely ultrasonically clean uh, this uh, this movement or the not the movement, just clean the case ultrasonically. Um, that way, I've got all the gum off it and I can oil it up later. So thanks for watching. Hope this wasn't too long and boring, and I will catch you on the assembly.